Let's take a few minutes here and go through our cost items database, kind of how to set that up and, and use it effectively. Um, definitely can, can save you a lot of time and, and more importantly, just build that consistency throughout um, all of your projects, all of your reporting it really does help in, in that manner. So I'm in my cost items database and the way I got there was main menu, cost items database. As I go there, we have our five different types of databases. We have our material, equipment, labor, subcontract, and other. So they all really work pretty much the same way. Uh, and I want to show you a really quick way to start building that out because you don't have to just come in here and spend a whole bunch of time building out um, by, say, you know, adding material one after another, or even you, if you've got your list somewhere material list you can import it in using our template um, and just do a file save as after you got it filled out and upload that CSV file and it will populate but there is another way to do it and it's as you're estimating I'll just jump into an estimate here real quick I'll pull up a kind of a random one unlock that real quick we'll jump into our items and as I've added an item uh, to my data or to my estimate and maybe to to my section here, and let's say I use add manually, what I want to show you here is that as I come up here and let's say I've give it a a name, but then I'm going to say this is material. So item type is material. Down here at the bottom, save this item into my material items list. Now, if I say that that is labor or equipment, so now it says equipment, save this item into my equipment list. So as you very first start estimating in contract reform, and you can be automatically building out, um, building out those cost item databases. Just a handy, easy way to do it. So let's jump back to our cost items database here. And I'll just use stay in the material items because, like I said, it all really works the same way. Some of the fields change a little bit in the uh, in the import templates. Um, so in my material items, I'm just going to use this one as an example. So I'm just going to hit my edit button here. I can I can delete that item. I can make that uh, inactive, uh, or I can edit this item. So even if I was just adding one manually by add material these are the screens really or the fields that you're going to see they're just going to be pre-filled out here so name status active unit cost unit default markup and default cost code so again that's what i mean it it builds this consistency across the board as you're building out uh, items, cost type items, wherever it might be in contract or form, an estimate, schedule of values, change orders, purchase orders, etc. You're just pulling in from your database. It's always going to cost code it to the same one. It's going to give it that 10% markup, which you can change uh, once you bring it in. Um, but it build, again builds that consistency and just saves a whole lot of time and, and typing. So it's just... Uh, coming into each one of these tabs using either the method of view import template and again that template is different for each one of these tab and, and database item type so be, be aware of that so equipment items template is different than material um, then you're just going to re-upload that or again add a blank material fill that out and you're off and running so any questions on that, uh, we can help you at all. Just give us a holler. We're here to help. And you also have the live chat up here. Remember, don't forget about that one. So once I hit my live chat button, just tell us who you are. Write us a message. And literally, rarely, more than about two minutes, uh, you're going to get an answer and somebody there to help you. All right, everybody. Appreciate you watching and have a fantastic day.